Hi, welcome to our demo class of uh, data science and predictive analytics and uh, machine learning courses from uh, Tech Science. These two courses are uh, short duration courses from Tech Science spanning about uh, 20 hours each and uh, are part of the high impact series. Now, uh, in this demo class, uh, we have uh, uh, structured it uh, in the following manner. We are going to uh, take you through the uh, structure of the courses, uh, both the data science and predictive analytics and uh, machine learning courses. And we will also let you know the career options uh, that each of these tracks uh, lead to. Uh, we will look into data science and predictive analytics use cases and machine learning use cases so that you are clear about uh, after taking these courses, uh, one of these courses, what are the kind of problems that you are going to be able to solve. Uh, we are going to take you through the uh, a glimpse of uh, exploratory data analysis or EDA process, which is a mainstay of the data science and predictive analytics uh, course and uh, data science uh, process, and also are part of uh, mach any machine learning or deep learning uh, process as well. Then we are going to uh, let you know uh, what are the different components of the machine learning, typical machine learning process. The tools and technologies uh, used in uh, both uh, data science, predictive analytics, as well as machine learning. And uh, we are also going to uh, take you through a glance into the language uh, Python, because Python is going to be the language that is going to be used in all the things that you are going to cover uh, in these uh, two courses. If we compare the structures of these uh, two courses, let's look at uh, the data science predictive analytics one uh, to start with, uh, the components or the, the um, elements that we have there uh, is uh, we are going to take you through the data science introduction. So we are going to let you know what is uh, data science, why data science and uh, how data science is uh, performed at a high level. We are going to uh, take you through an introduction to the Python language. We don't expect any prior knowledge on Python or prior experience on uh, programming languages. We are going to give you um, the knowledge of Python right from scratch so that uh, and in a manner that is easy for you even if you do not have any prior exposure to uh, Python. Okay, Inferential statistics is uh, one of the key components of uh, data science because in data science predictive analytics and also in machine learning you are going to work with a lot of data and uh, it is important to understand the data so that uh, you are able to find out the right uh, visualization, right uh, insights and right uh, analytics uh, from the data that you are dealing with. Okay, so understanding data uh, using various statistical tool uh, to bring out uh, the statistical inferences or descriptive uh, uh, statistics uh, from the data is very, very important. We are going to take you through the exploratory data analysis uh, process after that. and. Uh, that is also going to include a lot of uh, data visualization. What exploratory data analysis and uh, or, or EDA uh, but does is that uh, um, in, in the process of analytics or in the process of machine learning, you need to understand uh, the data uh, much in detail and you need to kind of segment and look into the data and look into their uh, distributions, look into their step, uh, various statistics, uh, look into what transformation uh, that uh, uh, the data required in order to be input to your analytics or machine learning processes. You also need to uh, find out what anomalies and uh, mistakes uh, exist in the data because one of the challenges that you will face in organizations working in data science and machine learning is that uh, the quality of data. So in exploratory data analysis, you will also uh, learn how to deal with uh, missing data, how to deal with uh, wrong data, etc., etc. Uh, extensive visualizations are required in uh, data analytics and uh, we will go through some of the um, libraries uh, like Matplotlib and Seaborn to find out how to create some very insightful visualization from the data that you have. We are going to give you a, an introduction uh, to predictive modeling. Uh, apart from the data analysis that is part of uh, uh, data analytics and predictive data science and predictive analytics, you also need to understand how to solve some of the uh, data related problems using regression and classification problems. So uh, we're going to uh, let you know how to create classification models and how to create regression models. We will specifically look into two uh, algorithms, machine learning algorithms, linear regression and logistic regression, one for 
uh, solving regression related problems and one for solving classification related problems and see uh, with real use cases real projects as to how to solve this uh, problems how to create uh, predictive modelings using these uh, algorithms okay in uh, machine learning um, uh, we, we are going to go straight into my uh, introduction to my uh, python uh, because uh, machine learning is a engineer um, engineer uh, related uh, area more of an engineer related area uh, whereas data science predictive analytics is more of a analyst related uh, area so because uh, machine learning is uh, a more engineering related area we are going to get into the language python language uh, straight away we are going to learn uh, the various language elements, data structures, internal data structures, NumPy and Pandas uh, data structures, etc., etc. And then we get into the introduction to machine learning. We will learn what are the different kind of algorithms are there and uh, what kind of problems can be solved through uh, the various kind of algorithms. We will look into five different machine learning algorithms uh, through uh, real life projects. Uh, we will look into regression problems, solving regression uh, problems using linear regression and we are going to look into um, solving uh, classification problems using logistic regression support vector machines for com for solving complex uh, um, classification problems and uh, also decision tree and random forest which is an ensemble uh, technique we will also so now that you have learned uh, five different machine learning algorithms it is also important for you to understand as to how in what situations you are going to apply what kind of uh, algorithms and uh, create what kind of models. So we are going to uh, let you know uh, what are the different uh, model selection uh, methods, uh, what are the kind of scenario and how do you assess which model or which kind of algorithm are best suited for which kind of real life uh, scenarios. Okay. So now uh, in terms of carrier tracks that are coming out from the data science predictive analytics uh, stream as well as uh, machine learning stream. Machine le learning as we mentioned uh, it's more of a engineering uh, related uh, um, related area and uh, some of the carrier tracks include machine learning engineer, machine learning data engineer, Python uh, machine learning developer etc. And uh, as far as data science and predictive analytics are concerned uh, uh, you have data scientists or data science engineers, data analysts, business analysts, data mining engineers and so forth. Uh, one thing is uh, very interesting is that uh, while uh, machine learning is more of an engineering related uh, stream, the data science and predictive analytics are also suited for business professionals and management professionals which are non-IT fields. Okay, With little bit of understanding into the Python language and uh, understanding of uh, data and statistical methods and visualization methods and some of the predictive uh, modeling methods. Business and management professionals are going to use these uh, tools and technologies into great use um, doing data analytics uh, for their organizations. Okay, Data analytics and predictive modeling for their organization to solve complex data related problems and uh, um, solve problems which, which lead to organizational growth etc. Right. Some of the key features of the course uh, courses, these two courses, are uh, both the courses, machine learning and predictive uh, data science, predictive analytics, are uh, going to be mostly project based. Uh, we are going to cover uh, theories, but not in terms of full sections of theories, um, except for a few uh, things like uh, inferential statistics, uh, etc. Uh, other than that, it's going to be mostly projects and hands on based. Uh, so let's say. For instance, uh, when we are teaching you linear regression or random forest, we are going to uh, take you through not the theory um, uh, first, but we are going to start straight away with the projects. And as we go through the projects in sol solving a, a real life uh, challenge, uh, we are going to tell you about the various critical concepts which are part of those solutions. So the theories, uh, theory understanding, the foundational understandings of the concepts of these areas, uh, both these areas are embedded within the project based projects and hands on based uh, learning. Okay, so that's one key feature. Uh, we don't expect you to have, uh, uh, as I mentioned before, uh, uh, to, to have uh, prior Python knowledge or prior coding knowledge. We're going to teach you uh, Python uh, right from scratch so that it is easy for you to understand and uh, whatever you uh, learn in this uh, two courses, you can implement uh, 
fairly easy easily without uh, too much of effort into understanding creating understanding on uh, programming languages now for those who uh, do not have any prior uh, python knowledge or uh, prior programming knowledge we are offering uh, three two hour sessions before the courses uh, on python so that uh, you um, you feel confident uh, going into the course so uh, although uh, we we do not uh, it's it's not a prerequisite but attending this uh, six hour sessions uh, three sessions of two hours is, is going to be immensely beneficial if you want to be confident on uh, python right at the beginning when the courses start we uh, in texans uh, take a lot of pride in uh, our efforts in uh, in kind of quality uh, material uh, course material that we create for our uh, learners we constantly spend a lot of effort a lot of effort on uh, creating ebooks and creating course material presentations etc so that uh, learning is uh, always very very easy for our uh, learners and as part of this uh, two courses we are going to offer you six uh, uh, ebooks uh, from uh, from from our libraries these are exclusively created by texans uh, through our uh, course development or course content development uh, endeavors all the sessions uh, in the courses are going to be online live sessions instructor led and once uh, the sessions are completed uh, this recorded videos are going to be the session recorded videos are going to be uploaded into the lms you are going to have access to to the texans uh, lms and uh, these are going to be available for you for uh, future reference so at any point of time you can come back and uh, learn offline of what you have gone through uh, in your live sessions so they are, they, these are these are going to be recorded uh, we are going to also provide you instructor support for any queries and clarifications uh, till up till uh, one month after the uh, course i mean it's it's not a hard uh, limitation uh, of one month but uh, we may be uh, we will be ha happy to support you even uh, beyond that but formally uh, one month instructor uh, uh, support is uh, going to be given to each learner uh, after the course now this um, uh, support is going to be provided by uh, the exclusive course forum that uh, online forum that we are going to create within the lms and uh, you will have access to these forums uh, and you can raise the queries uh, within this LMS forums and uh, the instructor uh, is going to clarify your doubt in the forum. You, you will have continued access to uh, the TechScience LMS for all your records, so all your uh, courses, all your... Uh, so um, in not, not, not only uh, the uh, courses that we are talking about, if you take future courses and I, we wish uh, uh, you do a lot of courses from TechScience, future courses uh, also uh, are going to be stored in your uh, LMS so at any point of time you can view all your past courses all the recorded sessions all the uh, certificates quizzes results etc etc all are going to be there for you to refer um, in the LMS now let's let's start off with uh, some uh, idea as to why we need uh, data science and predictive analytics so we we'll start with uh, data science and predictive analytics uh, some some understanding of that now anything that we learn uh, normally we intend to uh, learn something uh, to solve solve some problems okay now data science and predictive analytics is uh, no different so what are the kind of problems that uh, we can solve uh, by that so let's say a microcredit company there is a problem statement last year they saw a default rate of 8% of their customers this is a very high uh, rate compared to 2% that they target can we analyze all the customer data and find out which of the customer attributes are influencing default behavior? Now, what is default? Default is when somebody, it's, it's a microcredit company, so that means uh, it gives out loans to its uh, customers, okay? And uh, when it gives loans, it expects to give get back the principal and the interest in terms of uh, uh, EMIs uh, uh, in, in future, okay? So default is when the customer stops paying, paying back, right? Now it happens, I mean, some some uh, uh, deliberately some because of financial hardships etc now it is Im uh, important to understand uh, uh, past customer uh, behaviors uh, and uh, kind of uh, relate to okay so these are the kind of features or these are the kind of attributes so if the customer has then the chances of those customers defaulting goes higher so basically in this uh, problem statement we are asked to 
analyze all the historical transaction data or historical credit data or loan data and find out in future can we based on some insights that we draw from the historical data can we for the future predict which of the customers have higher risk of defaulting okay so we will do a eda project with this problem statement and see how we can do that okay we will do a lot of uh, analysis we will do a lot of uh, uh, use a lot of statistical method we will use a lot of uh, visualization methods and uh, we will finally make conclusion as to these are the customer attributes that the company has to focus on in terms of um, finding out uh, which customer are more uh, prone to uh, defaulting in future okay let's say uh, there is a property brokerage firm and uh, they have sold uh, millions and millions of thousands of thousands of uh, houses uh, in the past and they have all this uh, data available to them now they have a manual process of any any uh, new property comes in any new house comes in for a resell or new sell say for instance and uh, there is a manual process somebody goes in and evaluates a lot of uh, parameters and finds out okay this is approximately what the value of the property can be okay now that entire manual process can be automated because we already know that what can be the house of a price if there are two bedrooms and five two balconies and uh, three um, uh, toilets and uh, um, uh, one garage or two garages or the, the square footage and uh, square footage of the lawn and square footage of the balconies etc etc there's a lot of parameters and we can predict automatically so there is a um, uh, linear regression um, uh, project that we are going to do to solve this uh, problem then we are going to uh, do a classification problem to find out for a telecom, a telecom company can we predict uh, before a customer attrites attrites means um, let's say um, this customer is uh, this 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 is airtel we are talking about and uh, the customer goes over to vodafone okay so airtel wants to know that uh, before the customer goes to vodafone I want to stop it. I, mean, I, I, I need to know which customer have the highest risk of going over to Vodafone or any other um, other service provider. Okay. And stop them by engaging them and uh, talking to them and uh, uh, kind of uh, seeing what challenges they are facing and solving those challenges or making some offers, some discounts and etc. etc. Okay. Through uh, better customer engagement. So these are some of the uh, problems that we can solve through uh, uh, data science and predictive uh, analytics. Now, in case of uh, machine learning, there are uh, some other uh, problems that we have problem statements we have taken, and uh, these are some of the real life uh, scenarios that we are going to uh, solve also uh, through the uh, course. Okay, so for a financial services company, they have uh, um, a system of uh, taking in handwritten forms, application forms, and uh, uh, typing them into uh, their uh, automated systems. Now, the the process of transferring that data from the manual form, manually filled form, into the um, into the IT system is 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 completely manual. Okay, somebody looks at the form and uh, types it into the uh, IT uh, system. Now, if there is an image recognition, handwriting recognition software, which is based on machine learning, some machine learning algorithm then it is better, uh, it, it, it can be uh, completely automated. So we will put a scanner uh, for the forms and the scanner converts it into a image and that image has handwrite, handwritten, uh, handwritten characters and words and etc. the text and that, that can be um, automatically read through the ML based solution and put into the IT system. Okay. For an online movie company like uh, Netflix or Hotstar or uh, Amazon Prime, etc., etc., there is a challenge that how can we recommend more um, movies to the customer's liking or better movies uh, to the customer's liking, okay, more effectively. So a movie recommendation system um, actually means that the viewership increases, the number of viewer increases, and also the amount of time um, each of their customers spend on, 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 on their uh, movies or on their programs also increase by better recommendation. Okay. For an online e-commerce company, when there are uh, 
product reviews coming in, there's a manual process of reading those uh, product reviews and um, uh, kind of uh, making an inference as to whether a product is doing well or not. But there are thousands of uh, millions of uh, um, reviews coming in, product reviews coming in from customers every day for a large company, large e-commerce company. So this entire process can be automated by which a smart system can read through all the product reviews coming in every day and puts in a score either say uh, if it is a very good review uh, say a score of uh, 9 out of 10 or a score of 2 out of 10 if it is a extremely negative review etc so it can quantify by the pattern of the by reading the pattern of the uh, um, review and it, it can automatically quantify so that's that's a uh, sentiment analysis uh, system so we will also uh, do a project uh, for a sentiment analysis system and see how we can do that right so eda um, as an introduction is uh, defined by uh, is is a process that is uh, used by data scientists machine learning engineers and analytics professionals to analyze and investigate data sets and summarize their main characteristics often employing data visualization methods there are two goals of two uh, very high level goals of uh, eda or exploratory uh, data analysis one for direct purposes so you are given a problem like uh, finding out uh, which attributes of uh, customers are directly influencing the default behavior. So that is, um, that is solving a problem uh, for the business by analyzing the data and finding out patterns and insights and reporting to the management or the stakeholders using various reports and visualization. So that's one purpose, all right? And the second purpose of exploratory data analysis is that you've got a problem to solve like uh, creating a movie recommendation system. Now, the data that you uh, receive from uh, uh, Netflix, I mean, your, or your organization, is uh, full of uh, anomalous data, incorrect data, incomplete data, and, and uh, data which is not really suitable for uh, feeding into a machine learning algorithm to create a model for recommendation system, right? So in that case, an exploratory data analysis uh, process has to take place to understand the data to transform the data, to clean the data, and to make the data fit for getting ingested into a machine learning algorithm for creating the recommendation system, right? So these are two broad purposes of uh, EDA per se. Okay, so there are uh, multiple different types of, uh, I mean, we are going to skip through a little quickly here. And uh, during the course, we are going to uh, spend more time as to go into various uh, details, etc., etc. But uh, broadly, there are different types of uh, EDS, um, univariate, uh, non-graphical, and uh, univariate analysis, and uh, multivariate analysis. And uh, within univariate analysis, uh, we have graphical methods and non-graphical methods. Uh, within uh, bivariate or multivariate uh, analysis, we also have uh, graphical and non-graphical methods. Now, uh, non-graphical methods are mostly uh, statistical uh, method-based, uh, so you want to find out the distribution let's say uh, we talk about univariate uh, analysis univariate analysis is uh, uh, one one example of univariate analysis can be uh, finding out uh, the distribution of the data so I I is it a normally distributed data is, is it a right skewed distributed data or a left skewed uh, distributed data or it doesn't follow any pattern etc etc so that's a univariate analysis uh, and um, uh, while you can do the uh, distribution i mean you can uh, uh, do a non-graphical analysis, but you can also uh, employ the help of a histogram, which is uh, something like this. This is this is a histogram, which is going to give you the distribution. Or you can also create a univariate uh, bo box plot to find out the distribution of a, a particular attribute in your data. And uh, we are not getting into much detail. Uh, we will explain all of this uh, in the course. While univariate analysis uh, deal with only a single piece of data, single feature or single attribute of the data, the multivariate analysis, graphical, non-graphical, they deal with multiple pieces of data at uh, uh, one shot, okay? So uh, more, most uh, common type of multivariate uh, analysis is uh, bivariate analysis uh, in which we try to find out relationships uh, between two features, two different features uh, in a data set, in, a, in, in an input data set. So say for instance, uh, there are line graphs, so there are bar graphs. 
which are examples of bivariate uh, analysis. Now there are other types of EDS and uh, this slide talks about uh, mostly uh, graphical uh, types of uh, EDA. We, we employ the use of scatterplot, uh, which one example is these. We um, employ the use of uh, line plots or trend charts. Uh, or you can also call it a run chart or this uh, scatterplot is also called a bubble chart, etc. So um, this kind of charts are used for uh, visualization of uh, data and data relationships okay, as part of your uh, EDA. Uh, you can have something called a heat map, which is uh, which is a, uh, a very good example of complex multivariate analysis. So you have, let's say, ten uh, uh, features in your data set, and uh, you plot it in a heat map and find out the degree of correlation between each of these combinations. Okay, and uh, these numbers and this uh, color coded uh, numbers are actually correlation coefficient or degrees of correlation between those uh, each each combination of uh, features okay some of the tools uh, as i mentioned uh, some of them uh, we have already mentioned uh, univariate analysis and visualization bivariate multivariate visualizations predictive models uh, such as linear regression use of statistical methods inferential statistics and descriptive statistics so these are some of the tools of uh, exploratory data analysis so we have uh, regression models we have classification models uh, we have uh, supervised uh, models which are linear regression, classification models. These are uh, examples of supervised uh, modeling. There are unsupervised uh, techniques like uh, clustering, using k-means algorithm, etc., etc. So these are some of the uh, uh, techniques that are uh, used by uh, exploratory data analysis. More complex uh, EDA techniques use uh, use techniques like uh, uh, dimensionality reduction techniques. So let's say, for instance. In your input data set, um, if there are say 200 fields or uh, 500 fields and uh, in, in uh, uh, a lot of uh, industrial uh, use cases, uh, it is very realis realistic to have those many number of uh, fields, especially in image recognition or uh, in case of uh, NLP, natural language uh, processing, text processing, etc. There are uh, high dimensional data. So that means that the number of fields or number of features or attributes are very, very high. So uh, if that is the case, then uh, the model building process becomes uh, very, very uh, complex. The uh, exploratory data analysis process uh, becomes very, very complex. There are uh, dimensionality reduction techniques uh, like PCA, principal component analysis, or TSNE, uh, or TSNE. Uh, these are used for bringing down the high dimensional data into lower dimensional data while making sure that not a lot of uh, data uh, variance information are lost so that model building is still efficient with the reduced uh, number of dimensions okay this is uh, uh, a high level uh, uh, process flow of uh, EDA process uh, so you have your input data you have uh, feature analysis process you have univariate multivariate you have correlation analysis correlation between your features data features you find out anomalies and missing values you uh, find out outliers of the data feature engineering if you need any transformation etc find out insights from after all the uh, analysis are done and then um, pass on the uh, results from all these processes into two uh, broad uh, uh, two broad output areas one is analytics and visualization for solving a business problem and uh, predictive modeling uh, which goes into uh, machine learning. These are some of the um, reasons why uh, exploratory data analysis is very, very important uh, for machine learning, uh, not only solving uh, business problems uh, directly, but uh, as an input, as a pre-processing before machine learning, uh, it is a very critical task. So um, it helps us uh, find out missing data. It uh, helps us find out, find out uh, data anomalies, outliers, Class imbalances, we will know uh, what class imbalances are and how it affects uh, machine learning modeling uh, negatively, um, preventing uh, accuracy uh, performance problems in uh, machine learning models. And uh, you need to have class balances. Okay, so finding class imbalances is one of the uh, things, uh, one of the uh, tasks that EDA has. Finding correlations between the data, let's say for instance you are doing a linear regression uh, modeling. Now there are certain assumptions or certain uh, 
prerequisites linear regression uh, modeling has. One of them are uh, absence of correlations between the data. So the EDA process will tell us whether there are pre-existing uh, correlations between the data. If there are, then we need to do feature engineering to get remove, get get rid of them. All right, uh, finding the right features for inclusion in the model, then ascertaining data types and values and transformation needs. Uh, there are data scales uh, that are uh, uh, scaling problems uh, that uh, machine learning or predictive modeling uh, faces. So let's say, for instance, you have um, 10 different uh, numeric fields and uh, um, any machine learning uh, modeling expect the data to be in the same scales. Otherwise, uh, the modeling, the weightage to particular features are uh, done in an imbalanced way. So higher degree, uh, values features with higher degree values are given more weightage whereas uh, features with lower degree values are given lesser weightage in the modeling which is not correct so we do data scaling and bring the scales of data in numeric fields into the same scales so we will see how to uh, do that uh, ascertaining needs for data transformation and derived features Re that includes the reduction uh, of dimensionality in case of uh, high dimensional uh, data, uh, ascertaining the need for additional data and uh, external data integration, etc. Ascertain noises in the data and uh, taking care of them. So all these are uh, reasons for EDA, uh, 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 efficient EDA before the machine learning modeling begins. Okay, now uh, we dive a little bit into the machine learning uh, process itself. So according to Wikipedia definition of machine learning, machine learning is a study of computer algorithm that improved automatically through experience and by the use of data. Now, what does it uh, mean? Uh, let's go into the next slide and uh, you will understand uh, by looking at this uh, uh, process flows. So uh, if you are familiar with uh, traditional programming, what happens is that uh, business comes with you, comes to you uh, with a problem. Now the problem, uh, problem and uh, a possible solution. Now the possible solution comprises of certain rules to be implemented through a program program code. Okay, so business is going to uh, tell you that if the data value is this, then process this. If the data value is that, then process uh, like that. Okay, so there's a fixed set of rules that the business tells you to solve the problem. Either business tells you or you find out uh, those rules. And then you encode those rules in the form of program code in the programs. Then data is fed into that program and uh, the output is, I mean, the result is in form of the uh, processed uh, data or data gets processed through the uh, rules and output comes out. Now machine learning is completely different. Machine learning is business come out, comes out uh, with a problem, but in cases where business doesn't know the exact rules, so let's say for instance we are dealing with a uh, problem that uh, let's say um, in the previous slide uh, we have uh, listed some uh, cool uses of uh, machine learning. So voice assistance like chatbots or stock price, price prediction uh, mechanism or email filtering or product recommendation or including movie recommendation, predictive maintenance in manufacturing uh, setups and self-driving cars etc etc. So let's see, uh, we'll take a simple example of email filtering. So when you receive your uh, mails in, in your office uh, email box or your Gmail even, what happens is that there is a spam, um, spam folder. Now emails automatically go into the spam folder, certain emails automatically go into the spam folder. So if you go into the, go and read into the uh, mails uh, in the spam folder, you will find out that they are actually spams. I mean, they are spam, spam detection mechanism for your uh, email client uh, is working pretty well. Now, how does it do that? It doesn't have any set of rules. It learns, it learns from, it learns from historical data. So, uh, um, so when Microsoft created Outlook or uh, Google created Gmail, they have uh, put in a lot of uh, historical data, historical emails and uh, marking them as, okay, this mail is spam and this mail is ham. Ham is not spam. Okay, it's, it's another term that is used. So the system, the spam filtering machine or spam filtering engine is, is a machine learning algorithm that is fed millions and millions of emails with labels 
as this is spam signifying one say one as a label and not spam say zero so the machine the algorithm learns from the historical data and it creates those patterns inside inside the model and um, at the end it creates a model and when this model is used in your spam filtering then what happens is that any more uh, uh, fill any more uh, mail that is coming in it goes through the model and the model automatically detects whether something is a spam or not it is not a fixed set of rules that the model has but it's a learning mechanism that is built in within the model that is infused that is created by the uh, machine learning algorithm or classification algorithm in this case uh, and, and it keeps on uh, learning from uh, new data okay so when you when you mark something on spam as spam in your mailbox it, it uh, gets into the um, it in its uh, database and it uh, keeps on learning the new uh, categorization of okay so this mail is also spam so uh, these are the patterns that I find so this must be a, a spam later on okay uh, if I find a similar uh, mail later on uh, I have to uh, mark this as a spam okay so they they learn from the data okay and uh, historical data is fed into that learning process now if you see the traditional programming process there is no learning process there are fixed rules that are embedded here in this case the machine learns from the historical data it creates those models or patterns and the the patterns are embedded uh, within the model and when uh, the model is fed the new data it generates the outcome and classification in this case uh, uh, in this case of uh, spam filtering saying that okay this mail is a spam or this mail is not a spam okay so that's the difference between uh, traditional programming and uh, machine learning there are different types of uh, machine learning uh, even uh, I've mentioned uh, supervised learning and unsupervised learning uh, semi-supervised learning and uh, reinforcement learning so what is uh, supervised learning supervised learning is uh, the kind of machine learning where you have labeled data so let's say for instance uh, the uh, house price prediction uh, example that I've given or uh, the spam filtering uh, example that I've given you have uh, given historical data to the uh, learning engine which is the learning algorithm for creation of the model so they are supervised uh, learning processes unsupervised learning process is that input data does not have labels okay or it has labels but it doesn't have any significance it, it doesn't know what is what right um, especially if they, they've um, they do not have the target level okay so it doesn't have a classification level or it doesn't have a numeric prediction level etc okay so those are unsupervised learning semi supervised learning is a blend between supervised learning and unsupervised learning so they initially start most of them initially start as supervised learning and later on become smart and become unsupervised so one good example of semi supervised learning is the google photos okay so initially it'll ask you who is this guy and you say your name and uh, later on it will keep on learning from other photos and uh, learn how to recognize uh, your photo or somebody else's photo which was labeled initially okay uh, reinforcement learning is uh, something which uh, let's say uh, the online games or uh, the self-driving cars this this kind of uh, uh, engines uh, use uh, they they use an uh, agent uh, and uh, reward penalty based uh, mechanism so an agent is a process which in reinforcement learning tries to find an optimum path to solve a problem if it goes into the wrong, wrong direction it gets a penalty if it goes into the right direction it gets a reward okay the target the problem has to be solved in the maximum reward path okay so by attempting over and over again to solve the problem it finds out the path which gives it the lowest penalty or the highest reward okay so that's that's reinforcement learning all right so uh, in machine learning there are uh, other classifications one is uh, mentioned um, regression problems and uh, one is classification problems so example of uh, regression problems are when you have uh, uh, let's say that they take the case of the house price uh, prediction problem so you have historical uh, property prices and you have uh, their uh, property attributes and uh, you have new uh, properties coming in and you want an automated model which when fed with the attributes of the new property will sp uh, spin out the uh, 
approximate price predicted price okay so that's a problem now how does it do it it creates linear regression models linear regression models are nothing but your linear linear equations uh, that you have uh, learned in the schools so let's say um, in this equation the x1 x2 x3 are values or features of the um, or, or the, the predictor variables so let's say for instance for the house price prediction x1 can be the number of bedrooms x2 can be the number of balconies x3 can be the uh, total square footage uh, x4 can be the number of toilets x5 can be the number of uh, um, car uh, parking areas etc etc and y is the the target variable or the uh, predict to be predicted uh, variable and that is uh, the house price okay so what happens is from the historical data given x1 x2 x3 are available within the historical data the coefficients are found out okay by the learning algorithm so the best combination or the best equation is your linear regression model so once you find the best uh, linear equation by the linear regression process it is as simple as that creating the linear equation uh, using the linear regression model which uses a process called gradient descent and we will learn what is the process of uh, gradient descent uh, in the in the course so once you find this equation you feed in the new values of x1 and x2 and x3 you will easily find the y value which is the new house price okay so this is this is example of uh, regression problem and classification problem uh, I mentioned that uh, the problem of uh, finding spam and ham and uh, uh, the the, uh, the algorithm learns from the historical data which are labeled data labeled as spam and ham um, is, is a classification problem okay and they are both uh, both regression problems and classification problems are are, are actually uh, examples of uh, uh, supervised uh, algorithms okay some of the key techniques that you are going to learn uh, during the course is uh, statistical methods of analyzing data, extensive visualization techniques, measuring model performance because uh, we talked about you will learn how to create those uh, algorithms or um, how to use those uh, learning algorithms, machine learning algorithms or predictive algorithms to create models. And uh, we also need to understand uh, how to measure the model performance and how to optimize those models. Okay, so we will use mechanisms such as uh, using loss functions, performance metrics uh, for uh, regression problems, performance metrics for classification problems, etc. Uh, very interesting uh, topics. Uh, we will see how to optimize uh, models. So we will use uh, uh, methods such as cross validation and uh, uh, hyperparameter uh, tuning, etc. And we will also, as, as we mentioned, uh, we will see some uh, scenarios for uh, finding out uh, which models are or which kind of learning algorithms are applicable for which kind of problem solving. Now, uh, in terms of uh, introduction to uh, Python, uh, Python is, is a language which is uh, very, very easy to uh, understand and uh, write. It's an it's a interpreted language. It's a high level uh, general purpose uh, language. Uh, it has lots of uh, different uh, usages. Uh, Python has uh, Python is uh, widely used now for uh, creating uh, applications, especially web-based applications. Uh, it has uh, framework web-based uh, uh, application development frameworks like Flask, Django, etc., which are getting uh, very widely popular. Uh, Python is a de facto uh, language uh, chosen by the world for machine learning and artificial intelligence and deep learning related uh, problems. So that's a very, very uh, uh, significant use of uh, Python. Uh, but uh, apart from that, uh, Python is widely used in various other uh, uh, sp spaces like uh, IT security and uh, uh, etc. Okay. Um, it's a dynamically typed language. It is gar garbage collected uh, language. Uh, if you have uh, known Java, uh, there is a garbage collection. I mean, if you have uh, known um, any language, uh, there is a process called uh, garbage collection. So once your program execution is over, if your uh, variables or values uh, inside the variables are existing in the memory, 
it is easy for hackers to tap into the memory and uh, find out those values and in case of uh, say uh, processing of financial transactions etc uh, it's it's uh, it's it's a big vulnerability so it's a garbage collected automatically garbage collected uh, language uh, there's huge community support for uh, python for all kind of users especially in uh, machine learning deep learning related users there's a wide variety of libraries uh, for specific uh, functions that are available both for uh, application development and ml ai related uh, applications uh, multiple paradigms uh, sorry libraries coming in uh, uh, twice uh, latest version is 3.9 we will uh, get into a little bit of example of uh, python and see how we uh, use python and uh, what we are going to learn in python i am launching uh, jupyter notebook so in my uh, jupyter notebook uh, the entire course structure uh, rather the entire uh, content of uh, what we are going to learn in uh, python uh, in the machine learning as well as the uh, the data science predictive analytics course was given so we are going to uh, learn various uh, how to create variables the types of uh, different types of variables uh, examples of uh, how do we validate uh, python is a, um, a dynamically typed language uh, we are going to look into conditions we are going to look into uh, iterations so the examples of for iteration and while iterations are all given we're going to work with the numeric ranges. Uh, we are going to uh, find how to create custom uh, iterators. We are going to work with uh, the various collection objects in Python like lists, tuples, directories, sets, etc. Then we are also going to work with uh, very important uh, data types which are called uh, arrays and that's the management of arrays are in the numpy libraries and array is a very important uh, type of uh, data structure that uh, python has and is widely used in uh, machine learning and uh, data science um, applications because uh, some of the uh, very critical applications of uh, arrays are image processing or uh, video processing or uh, natural language processing etc where high dimensionality uh, data are used high dimensional numeric data used. So apart from arrays, we will also work with uh, the NumPy, sorry, the Pandas uh, library. Uh, Pandas library gives us uh, two very important uh, data types. One is uh, the Pandas series object, sorry, the Pandas series object and the other is the Pandas uh, data frame object. So series object is uh, kind of you can say uh, one dimensional data and data frame object is like a tabular type of data. So um, there are a lot of operations that you can perform with uh, Pandas data frame object which are more like um, working with uh, an RDBMS uh, table. Okay, so very very versatile uh, data structures and uh, objects and uh, we have got ex extensive amount of uh, code in uh, learning how to manage uh, each of these uh, data types and especially in relation to machine learning okay machine learning and uh, data science so friends thanks for joining our demo session about uh, data science and predictive analytics mastery as well as machine learning mastery hope things are clear and you have understood as to what we are going to cover in these two courses if you need further information, please uh, don't hesitate to reach out to us either on WhatsApp or call us on 636273-2428 or write to us at uh, info at techscience.ai. To purchase these courses, uh, you can go to our uh, website techscience.ai and uh, on the home page, you will find the courses uh, section towards the top of the page and you will find the joining link or uh, purchasing link for these courses. We also uh, would solicit your feedback about the demo session or about the course as to how you like it, uh, if you want any improvement uh, on the courses, if you want to learn something else. If you want to give uh, such feedback to us, please uh, scan this QR code or go to the link at the bottom and uh, you will find a form to fill up, a small form to fill up. Uh, it will probably take you two to three minutes uh, to fill up and you can reach out to us with the more feedbacks to improve our courses. Thank you and have a good time.